Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. If you saw my last video, you know that I finally graduated college, so I'm very excited. And you know, I had to come back, you know, with my first video, officially a full-time YouTuber, something hard-hitting, right? No, actually, I have just wanted to be able to indulge in the nostalgia of being a 90s kid, and I wanted to watch these old shows from my childhood, specifically, Nickelodeon shows. And so here we are today. Hopefully this video is going to interest you. Hopefully fellow late 90s, early 2000s Nickelodeon viewers are going to enjoy this and maybe I'll remind you of some of your old faves. I'm really excited. I think I'm definitely going to cry watching some of these clips. I don't know. Nostalgia. <laughs> in planning for this video, I've done a little bit of research in just trying to go back and reassemble the timeline of what I watched on Nickelodeon. A lot of it gets confusing because there were a lot of different programming blocks with different names and then they would be transformed or they would be combined with other ones to create new networks or new channels such as Nicktoons, Teen Nick, The N, Noggin, Nick Gas, Nick Jr. A lot happened over the years. And by the way, of course, there are going to be lots of shows that I do not mention that I'm sure you might be pissed at me about. How could I not mention this? But I'm really truly trying to focus on my personal favorite shows, the ones that I remember the most or that impacted me the most as a child. And I'm pretty much going from, I was born in 1995, so starting around the late 90s all the way to I think 2007, which is when I would have turned 12. But first let's give a shout out to today's sponsor, Helix Sleep. I don't know about you, but sleep's pretty important to me. <laughs> Actually, I am very, very stubborn about getting my eight hours every night, and my sleep schedule has been really messed up the past few months because of my last semester of college, so I'm trying to refresh my sleep schedule and get back into a healthy zone. Our old mattress was good for a few years, but it ended up getting these kind of uncomfortable dips, and we realized it was time for a new one. We're also moving apartments soon, so that was a good time for us to start fresh, get a new mattress, and make sure we can get our best sleep possible. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses that fit your unique needs and preferences based on your sleep style and your body. You can take their Helix sleep quiz and fill out your desired mattress size, firmness, your usual sleeping position, and they'll match you with a mattress that is right for you. Helix matched me with their Helix Midnight mattress. This one works really well because my boyfriend and I are both side sleepers and we both prefer a medium firmness. The first night I tried our mattress, I was very pleasantly surprised. Obviously, I was expecting it to be nice, but I love how buoyant it feels, especially compared to our old mattress. It just feels very light and airy, but also just firm enough while still being soft. Again, medium, very Libra, I love it. And of course, without those uncomfortable dips, it is very good at supporting our backs and I always wake up feeling wonderful. Helix mattresses are delivered right to your door for free in the US and it comes packaged rolled up in a box so it's very easy to set up all by yourself, though I have to admit that Nathan did the majority of the work, so <laughs> thank you Nathan. If you want to try out a Helix sleep mattress, they will give you a 100 night sleep trial so you can test it out and you'll get a 10 year warranty. So with that trial, you can really get to know the bed, try it out, see if it works for you, and if you don't love it, they will pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. Click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash tiffanyferg for up to $200 off your Helix sleep mattress plus two free pillows. Wait, I forgot to mention, there's a little bit of a meme like, were you a Disney kid or were you a Nickelodeon kid? Because that says a lot about you. I will definitely say I watched a lot of Nickelodeon, but I did watch a fair bit of Disney. So I'd say, you know, I was somewhere in the middle, a little bit of both. Okay, starting out, the year was 1995. I was born in October, thank you. At that point, many of my later favorite shows were already on and had been for a few years, including Doug, Rugrats, all that. So let's watch a couple of clips from those to start off. By the way, I hope this doesn't get absolutely wrecked in terms of copyright, but if there are certain things that I can't show in this video, all of these shows and stuff are pretty widely available here on YouTube, so you'll be able to find them if you like. Okay, Doug, here we go. Oh my God. OK, 
Okay, to be honest, I don't remember anything about Doug. I just remember that he was there, you know? Moving on. Rugrats, absolutely. I found this iconic clip, the Tommy Pickles versus the junk food kid moment, and this was one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Honestly, I would have been the junk food kid on the playground. That says a lot about me. I thought I told you not to show your sorry hide around my playground. I'm not sorry. I won't hide, and this isn't your playground anymore. I forgot how cute Tommy's voice is. Oh my god. All right, how does this go? Uh-oh. Oh my god, the gum. I remember this. Horrifying. I can't look! Oh no, I remember the gum and they ruined her hair. Bottom line, I just love Rugrats. I think it's like one of the only shows I can think of that was focused on babies. And obviously as I was a baby and a toddler and a young child while watching the Rugrats, I feel like it was perfect for me. I could relate and it's just still a very cute show. Lots of fond memories. And all that, oh my God. I forget how iconic the cast of all that was and is. Super young Amanda Bynes. That's Lori Beth, the icon. I just watched Good Burger the other day. One of my favorite 90s Nickelodeon movies. Keenan and Kel and a lot of the All That cast. All That was essentially like the kids version of Saturday Night Live, this really big cast ensemble with these sketch comedy shows and I loved it. Then we have this fever dream, which I have thought about so many times since I was a kid and I just remember like flashes of it and being so confused and not remembering where I watched it or what was happening. But I remember like hands and pencils and like digging and specifically I remember the sounds. And so I had Googled it to try to find it for this video and I found it. It is called Ambi and Dexter and these were these little shorts created for Nick Jr. in 1997. This one was my favorite. It is the gardening short. <laughs> I'm excited to watch it. This is honestly just ASMR for children. Like no wonder we all loved it and never forgot about it. These shorts were just so wholesome, so sweet, and I obviously as a child did not understand Ambi and Dexter was a reference to ambidextrous because they're hands and then they transform into the little people. Love it. Then we have the wonderful Hey Arnold, which premiered in 1996. I specifically remember this episode with Helga's Arnold Shrine. So good. This was exactly how I felt about my elementary school crush. How I forget my cares, how the essence of you lingers sweet me dear. That always grossed me out with the, uh, the used gum. Another thing from Hey Arnold that stuck with me for a long time was stoop kids afraid to leave a stoop. Why? I don't know. Then we get to 97, 98, some more premieres, including The Angry Beavers, which I do not recall what this show was about other than the aforementioned Angry Beavers. <laughs> It is not ringing any bells, but I love how 90s the theme song is, obviously. The graphics. Cat Dog. I keep wanting to say iconic for each of these shows, but they truly were iconic to me. Cat Dog is a show about a cat and a dog who are combined as one. Like, head of the cat and head of the dog. There is no butt. And there's this Cat Dog episode. This clip is called Cat Wants a New Bottom. Better Bottoms, oh my god. With like the sexy 70s music in the background, I'm like. Pick any bottom you like. And there's more in the rear. Stop it. Okay, cat dog, I see you. And the incredible Wild Thornberries came out in 1998. See, now I'm wondering, like, did I watch these shows when I was two or three? I might have, probably. Forget the red, green goes with her eyes. We have Eliza and Debbie, sassy teenage sister that I wanted to be like. Wonderful hair and style. Mom? Girls! Oh my god, their mom was so cute. I loved her with her little glasses and her short hair and her bandana. Then, as I mentioned, in 1997, The Good Burger Movie. It's on Netflix right now if you've never seen it. I don't know what it would be like watching for the first time as an adult, but with all of my childhood memories and personal associations with the movie, it was great to rewatch. And then in 1998, The Rugrats Movie, everybody. I'm so excited. 
Hello, my wonderful, sweet baby boy. Stop it! Why am I almost crying? Okay, maybe it's because I have baby fever. If you haven't seen my latest podcast episode, I talked about that. This is so cute. This is when Dill was born. Dill Pickles. Dill Pickles. Baby. <gasps> Oh, so cute. This makes me literally want to watch all of the full length Rugrats movies. Whew, okay. By the way, all of this information is coming from Nickopedia in case you want to geek out about your favorite Nickelodeon shows. Then we have 1999. Um, as I mentioned, all the merging and changing of the programming blocks, which is just like, oh, from this hour to this hour, it's gonna be, you know, Nick Jr. or whatever. Noggin was a programming block, I believe, and then it was its own channel. Noggin was part Nickelodeon, part Sesame, and it ended up becoming Nick Jr. So that's the programming slot for preschoolers. And then Nick Gas, Nick Gas. This is like, this is the thing that made me want to do this video because Again, these are like my distant 90s memories where I'm like, when did I watch these shows? But why are they so powerful in my mind? I feel like nobody talks about them. So Nick Gas was a games and sports focused programming block and then it became its own channel in 1999. A lot of these were like action types of game shows and they were filmed at Universal Studios Florida. And every time they would show Universal and they would show the audience and the prizes and the slime and I just, I wanted to go so badly. I wanted to be a contestant on all of these shows. You had shows like Double Dare. So there was Double Dare, Family Double Dare, and then Double Dare 2000 came in the new millennium. There were also a lot of shorts and other little segments in between programs, including Heroes of the Game, which I vaguely and yet distinctly remember. I'll start with Pickle because I definitely remember this one. I think it involves a white board or chalkboard eraser. Patty was caught in the precarious predicament known as the pickle. Pickle. Okay, this one does not involve a, an eraser. Am I dreaming this? Again, when I talk about fever dreams, that's what all these clips feel like. I'm like, was that a memory or did I completely make it up? I don't know. Another segment was slaps. And for slow hand Larry, life was a pair of red stingy hands. Yes, I remember this one. Slow ham would fall for tickle palms and elbow fakes till he was slapped unhappy. I laugh because I'm like, why was I watching the game and sports channel when I definitely have never been an athletic kid, but I could relate to a lot of these segments. Like I would have been the slow hand Larry type of kid, you know? I would have been the kid stuck in the pickle who would have given up after two minutes and cried and gone home. And also I do love quiz and trivia shows. So I think that I was like, I'll use my intellect, if not my inferior physical capabilities. I'll win, I'll go to Florida, we'll see. Okay, so some of the shows that were on Nick Gas include Nick Guts, which this one means a lot to me. This show had three competitors and they would all compete. <laughs> <laughs> Me trying to describe sports. They would have all sorts of different little activities and courses to run through. And then by the end, they go on the aggro crag, which is like this big foreboding mountain. Let's just watch. And yes, I chose this because one of the contestants is named Tiff. So I'm rooting for her. Do, do, do you have it? Ooh. Do, 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 do you have it? <laughs> this intro do is everything. These kids obviously looked so old to me when I was young, but they're like 12, 13, I don't know. It's always just weird, again, to watch later and be like, those are babies, and I thought they were old. Players will get seven chances to grab the rebound. The player with the most rebounds wins. I loved this one. The fun things obviously about these obstacles and any sort of like obstacle course type of show is like you don't get the opportunity to do this type of shit in real life. So I'm like, put me in a bungee. I want to fly, grab a basketball. I don't know. Let me in. <laughs> Let me in, coach. Be like, you don't have a coach. You're not on any teams. Let's fast forward to the aggro crag. The aggro crag actually reminds me of, I don't know if you've seen The Rock's like Dwayne Johnson show. It's called Titan Games and their finale has this thing called Mount Olympus and that somewhat reminded me of Agro Crag, but also I forgot about another show called Ultimate Tag and they have a kind of like climb to the top 
um, which reminded me of that as well. Obviously a lot of these physical competition shows are similar, but come on, I'm like, oh, the real inspiration was Nick Guts in the late 90s. Maybe early 90s, actually. And most importantly, I think this is locked in my memory because I had the Super Nintendo video game of Nick Guts. And I remember that was my way of trying to play and convincing myself that I could do the basketball things and all of the little competitions, even if I never got a chance. I would always choose purple. That was my color. Then there was a show called Figure It Out, which would feature a lot of the cast members from all that and like other child stars. These celebrity panelists would try to uncover some highly unusual secrets. Hi, I'm Cassie Winchell from Wisconsin and I invented edible taco tips. Invented edible taco tape, of course. A tiny young Michelle Trachtenberg, that's amazing. From all that, Danny Tamborelli. Danny. Like, okay, obviously I'm nostalgic for all of these things because it comes from my childhood, but like, why don't they have shows like this anymore? Or I guess like I've seen they've tried to do some reboots of these shows, but it's like, come on, it's never gonna be the same. It's not gonna have the same fire, the same spirit. Or maybe I'm experiencing that like, my childhood was the best fallacy. Really though, the sets, the atmosphere, Universal Studios, Florida. <laughs> the only time everyone's wanted to go to Florida. No, that's not true. We wanna to go to Florida. Might not wanna live in Florida. And then of course the shows had very exciting grand prizes. Jay, what's the grand prize? A trip to Smuggler's Notch, Vermont, America's family resort where family fun is guaranteed. That is way too cool. Can I come with you? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I just love it all. Again, in these shows, I simultaneously want to be the host, contestant, and the celebrity panelist. And I didn't get to be any of them, it's fine. And then we have another of my favorites, Legends of the Hidden Temple. This show ran from 93 to 95, so it was literally over like before I was born. But I remember watching the reruns for a long time, and it just seemed like, again, the most fun obstacle course, game, whatever. And this show is so 90s. Legends of the Hidden Temple. So you've got little pairs, teams, and you gotta do all these uh, obstacles. I am so good at selling all of these shows. And if you can get the three-legged bolt out of the temple within three minutes, you'll both be going to space camp. Space camp? Now that's a sick prize. This course reminded me of the show The Floor is Lava on Netflix that came out last year. That totally reminded me of this set and like the whole idea of like carefully going around and trying to get through an obstacle. I just keep comparing, again, similar shows to each other, and I'm like, wow, they're similar. Interesting when you think about it. Then we get to 1999, which apparently was like my best Nickelodeon year. SpongeBob SquarePants premieres, Rocket Power premieres, The Amanda Show premieres, Moody's Point. Are you kidding me? Again, I need to rewatch all of Moody's Point. It was everything to me, still is. Totally Kyle, Block Bleaster. I cannot believe the genius of Amanda Bynes, that show, everything was precious to me. I was four years old and getting absolute gold on television. Thank you, Nickelodeon. Founded me because I traded my dad's car in for a can of fruit cocktail. I love fruit cocktail. Look at this hair, the tank top, the colors. What more can I say? We're gonna punch you in the neck till it hurts. Can I make a phone call first? Drake and Josh got their start on this show, or at least like maybe a breakout role. So good. And also in 1999, one of the acquired shows, so it wasn't a Nickelodeon original, but it was brought to the network, is Franklin. Hey, it's Franklin, come into your house. Little turtle, such a cutie. This theme song. Cottagecore dreams. Hey, it's Franklin. Okay, this theme song goes the hardest so far, and I remember most of the words. It was so sweet, so heartfelt. Why am I so emotionally invested in this show? And then in the new millennium, year 2000, we get As Told by Ginger, which the theme song says something about the grass is greener on the other side. Every time I hear that phrase, I think of As Told by Ginger. There was another show brought onto the network, Maggie and the Ferocious Beast. Great googly moogly. It's funny because I used to look back on these shows and be like, oh, those shows were for babies. But then I'm like, oh, at that time I was like five. So yeah, it makes sense that I would be watching like 
preschool or like young kid programming, but I remember learning about galoshes from this show. And in 2000, the Rugrats in Paris movie came out. I keep repeating myself, broken record in this video. I need to rewatch all of these things. That's my new 2021 goal. <laughs> Phil and Lil. Is that Chucky's new stepmom and his new sister? Surprise. I'm gonna get some Bobby. And I bet she's gonna be clean and cuddly and nice. Chucky's whole storyline was so sweet and so sad. And he's so sweet. I can't get over it. I'm gonna get a new mommy. I'm not gonna cry. Not yet. Then we have 2001. New shows premiering include The Fairly Odd Parents with this most iconic scene that I still quote to this day. Dad, when do we get to the ride? This is the ride! Yippee! Yippee! Why? That's still funny to me. Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Damesdale Dimmodome, iconic. We had a special that year. Rugrats was celebrating its 10 year anniversary and they had the premiere of the hour length special episode, All Growed Up. I remember watching this and being, I didn't know how to feel. I felt almost betrayed because I was like, these are my babies, these are the Rugrats, they can't be all grown up. But then I watched it and I was like, oh my God, this is kind of like, kind of cool because like, I'm gonna grow up someday. I don't know if I thought that deeply about it because again, I was six years old, but it was wild. It was weird to see. And in 2001, we had the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius movie, which I'm pretty sure I saw in theaters and I loved it. 2002, we have Chalk Zone premiere. Rudy's got the chalk, dude. You can draw whatever you need. That was a very imaginative and cool creative show. Don't remember many details from it, but it was there. Then we had the Adventures of Jimmy Neutron show come out. And I enlisted Max and Ruby because, again, I think I was a little old for this show at that point. I was seven, but Max and Ruby is one of the cutest fucking shows. I don't even care. I love Max's little mischievous face. Ugh, oh, so cute. Max and Ruby, Ruby and Max. The theme song's, mm, I've gotta say, a little low effort, but it's effective. Therefore, I don't care. I don't mind. I love it. Then 2003, my favorite original shows that came out, All Grown Up, again, Rugrats. They just move along with this and continue with the official All Grown Up series. Now that Angelica's turning 13, will she turn her back on- Okay, 13 year old Angelica is a style icon. Look at those little barrettes. Like she would literally be able to sell thrifted clothing for a hundred times markup on Depop right now. That outfit would go viral on Instagram. Literally all the style, again, I'm like, you're 12, 13, excuse me. These cartoons are so well-dressed. Other shows premiering in 2003, My Life as a Teenage Robot. I remember this one, Angsty, Angsty Teen Robot. It's enough to my face. That was a good show and a great theme song. And also, apparently Degrassi The Next Generation came onto Nickelodeon in 2003, and I definitely started watching it around then. It really doesn't seem like it was on Nickelodeon, but I don't know, let's not argue. I know a lot has been said about Degrassi, specifically this era, and then afterwards I kind of lost it after the original cast moved on, but like, we literally had Drake as an actor. Jimmy, some of the most dramatic and like traumatic um, TV plot lines were exposed to me via Degrassi and I was probably a little too young to be watching it at that point, but this is from the official Degrassi channel on YouTube. Top 10 worst couples in Degrassi. Number one, Rick and Terry. Rick and Terry, of course they're the worst couple. Oh no. All of the gnarly Degrassi storylines are rushing back to me and I'm like, oh, it's too much. I do hope leaving Roses wasn't intrusive. I'm a little shy. Me too. And I think it's sweet. Stop it, Terry. Anyway, before I cry at Degrassi more. 2003, we also had the Rugrats Go Wild movie, which is, of course, the Rugrats Wild Thornberries crossover, which I never knew I needed, but of course, of course. Yeah, Where'd you come from? This is supposed to be a deserted island. Debbie and Angelica. Oh. Look, it's Nigel Strawberry. I'm coming down. Nigel Strawberry. Oh, 
Absolute classics, literally. I am not exaggerating. And then we have the last few years of my childhood up until I turned 12. So let's see, 2004, I would have been nine years old, turning nine this year. We had new original shows, Drake and Josh, which doesn't even need a recap because that is forever burned into my brain. It's one of my favorite shows. Danny Phantom. Gonna catch him all cause he's Danny Phantom, Phantom, Phantom. Amazing. Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. I think it actually did help me like mentally prepare for like what is middle school gonna be like or like high school. I don't know how old they were in the show. Middle school maybe. And then Unfabulous. Do you guys remember Little Emma Roberts? I'm gonna be the one unflammable, it's better unfabulous. And then we also had the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, which of course I saw in theaters. Still, that movie means a lot to me. <laughs> SpongeBob in general. I barely even got to mention SpongeBob earlier, just because like, I don't think it even has to be verbalized. It doesn't even have to be spoken how significant SpongeBob is to me and to a lot of our generation, anyone who grew up watching SpongeBob. There's no limit to the number of SpongeBob quotes that I will say to this day. My whole life I will be quoting SpongeBob. And the movie was no exception. Then we have 2005. The only show that I cared about that year was Zoe 101. I fell down a rabbit hole recently, like looking at um, Jamie Lee Spears' Instagram, everything about the Zoe 101 reboot. I was so confused. I was trying to read about it. There's a lot, but that show was great. The campus that it's filmed at, I think is Pepperdine University in Malibu. And I literally wanted to go there because I wanted to, to go to school on the campus of Zoe 101. And finally, we get to the last year of this video, 2007. The two shows that I cared about that year that premiered were The Naked Brothers Band with Nat Wolf and the other wolf. Who's the other wolf? Alex Wolf? Nat and Alex. Yes. Very proud of myself for remembering. And iCarly came out that year. I think around this point, I was growing a little bit out of most things on Nickelodeon. So I definitely watched both of these shows, but I wasn't completely obsessed with them as I was with the shows from my earlier childhood. The Nickipedia pages also show the like acquired shows that are shown as reruns on the network. And in 2007, those were America's Funniest Home Videos, Home Improvement, and George Lopez, which I distinctly remember. There have been so many memes like waking up at, you know, 11 o'clock and the fucking George Lopez theme song is playing. <laughs> so I don't know what it was about this year, but I remember the Nick at Night. I remember watching these shows. I don't know if I particularly enjoyed any of them, but they were always on. They were a comfort if you were staying up late. And 2007 was a sad year because a lot of shows had their finales this year, including My Life as a Teenage Robot, Ned's Declassified, Danny Phantom, Drake and Josh, and Unfabulous. So that's why after that, I was like, you know what, peace out, I'm a teenager. What am I gonna watch now? I don't know, like just MTV music videos, VH1. <laughs> so the only shows that were on after that point, still airing new shows that I liked were SpongeBob, iCarly, and Zoe 101. Okay, so that's my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was 100% just a me thing. I just wanted to be able to get a little bit nostalgic about some of my old favorite shows. I wanted to know if these were in fact fever dreams or if they had actually existed. So it's nice to know that most of those are actually real memories that come from somewhere in the late 90s and early 2000s. Anyway, please comment down below and let me know which of these shows were your favorites or if there were any that I did not mention that you loved. Let me know. I want to hear about it. I want us to just have a nice space to talk about our 90s childhood nostalgia. Once again, thank you to Helix for sponsoring today's video. Check out the offer and the link in the description and stay tuned for future internet analysis videos. Okay, thanks, bye.